I wake up in the morning, sinking halfway to the bottom. There's a loud, distorted screaming in my soul. What's that? I'm a real person and not an avatar? Okay, so I haven't had much time to actually do one of these videos. I haven't had time to do anything, really. And everything has just been so stupid that I don't really want to talk about anything because it's all just like, hey, there's this thing that no one really cares about. Let's make it so that everybody now has to care about it because we're going to shut it down. And everybody's just jumping on everything and making it political. I just don't really, I don't really care anymore. I mentioned ages ago that I would be updating some of the stuff, like how my classes are going and things like that. And I haven't really felt the need to because everything's just been kind of ordinary. But then, this, this is why we have today's video. Then all of a sudden, we have um, cultural appropriation lecture. Now let me specify what this was for. This is for my creative writing course. And the creative writing course has actually been really good. Everybody's just had like a different perspective on things and they basically bring in a bunch of things like let's examine some famous writers, let's examine this person who writes this way and this person who writes this way and let's examine what methods they use and then explore, write how you want to write, explore how you want to write and try and find something that's best for you. Um, how to take criticism as well, like you need to put your writing out there so that people can actually say stuff about it and then you just take what they're saying and then you try and incorporate it into what you work out how you want to use this thing and then you use it see the lighting is garbage too everything looks garbage Trash. so it's actually really good and there's no reason for me to kind of go okay what's going on here and everything was fine until we had a lecture about what perspective you should be allowed to write in but okay i should clarify I don't actually think that it's a bad thing to have this lecture because in the current climate that we're in where everything is political, everything is just like, oh, we have to think about this in this way, in this political way, you can't just have fun anymore. I think it's a very necessary thing now because it's kind of saying, you have chosen to go into this field and this is what's happening in this field. So you have to make sure that you understand what is happening and you know how to deal with it. And you have to make up your own mind how to do such a thing because people aren't really gonna hold your hand through it. And then the way that the lecture was at least allegedly set up, and I'll get to why I said allegedly in a moment, is in a way to show these are people who think that cultural appropriation and all that stuff is, you know, something that you should self-censor for. You should, you should, you know, censor yourself and what you do, like, not really the free speechy angle and then you have somebody else who is full on free speech angle and then they were going to compare the two in the lecture and they did they did read out two of them at the beginning at the beginning and then afterwards under the guise of discussing both of them the lecturer basically just went on and on about how the cultural appropriation self-censor one was correct so didn't really talk about the other one at all like full on just went like this is correct and then started talking about bell hooks like just bell hooks all of a sudden like you should read bell hooks she's amazing and if you don't know who bell hooks is i'm just link some things you'll know who bell hooks is she's fucking insane and then that was just what it was and my problem with that is not the lecture itself as i said i think that it's a good idea to have all of these perspectives in one and say this is the climate that you're in and you have to make a decision based on all the other perspectives. I think that's a good thing. It was disguised as something that would do that, but it actually wasn't. It was this weird sneaky way to just talk about how cultural appropriation and the self-censor route is the only route that you're supposed to go. And it made it look like you had options. And that was just really, really dishonest. I just really didn't appreciate what was happening because throughout the entire thing as well it was like you have to just you have to decide potentially to people who have never heard of this thing before it's just like hey this is just this like new concept that you have to deal with in the industry that you're going into the writing industry or whatever it is you're doing and some of you may not have heard this was going on at all some of you just have some stuff going on over there and you don't know so I'm just going to give you the impression that you have options at first and then I'm going to give you the impression that I'm doing a balanced review of the, both those options but in reality I'm just trying to steer you towards one that'll heavily restrict you and who you are. So now that we're done with that and you know that's what's happening and that's kind of what spurred me to make this video like frustration from that, um, I have something to say about the kind of topics themselves. I'm not just going to leave it like this. So the thing about cultural appropriation, let me just kind of go through what he was talking about with what the lecturer was talking about with writing in this context. So he was basically saying that if, um, if you're a white man, you shouldn't really be allowed to write as a black woman or like, um, I don't know, just like a minority or like a woman or whatever. You shouldn't be allowed to do that. And obviously I disagree. I think it's fucking stupid. And that that was really where my frustration went to like, it's called creative writing. You're supposed to try and let your imagination go. They specifically did lectures where they said, push the boundaries of what is known as creative writing. 
Try and do something out there, do something else. Try and push the envelope of what character creation is, or what character development is, do expressive things, and then all of a sudden, it's like, no, you have to write, you have to stay in your own lane. And let me be fair, the lecture has like different authors and things come in, so it's basically a different lecturer from a different perspective. All over, it's the, it's the thing that I like. It's like, this writer says this way, this writer says this way, and you gotta just take it and do what you wanna do. So in a way, that's what this was. So it did actually make sense that one of them was kind of contradictory to the other because they were two different people. This wasn't the same lecturer talking about different, you know, things. If we go back into the context of the lecture itself, that's what I'm angry at. The, the fact that the lecture was kind of disguised as something that it, it, it clearly wasn't. But going back to cultural appropriation, I think that, weirdly enough, a little bit of it I actually kind of agree with. So I don't agree with the whole like identity politics side of it. I don't agree that if you have this skin tone, you're not supposed to write as this skin tone. If you have a dick, you're not supposed to write as somebody with a vagina. It's like, like no, I obviously don't agree with that. But the thing that I do want to talk about is research. So the research part of it, it's saying like, you need to know who you're representing. They kind of disguise the whole self censoring thing as research. They kind of say, well, you just need to have an accurate perspective. And the accurate perspective thing I agree with, but they're trying to push that so that it means that you sh shouldn't try, which is really weird to me. But let's talk about the research thing. I do agree that you should research your role, and there are more differences than you think. For instance, somebody with acne. If I wanted to write something that was like about somebody who had anxiety because of their acne, sure, I understand the anxiety apart, believe me, I do, but I've never had acne. I mean, I'm not saying my skin is great or anything. I mean, for the purpose of covering my lizard scales, my skin does perfectly fine, fellow humanoids. But, but I mean, just, I've never had that problem. So I would kind of have to go and at least talk to someone and be like, hey, how did you feel when you were going through that, when you had to take skincare, cream, and all that sort of stuff? Like, how did you feel so I can get it accurate? Like, if I'm talking about a guy character and I'm from the perspective of the guy character and he crosses his legs I know that's an awkward question but I'm gonna go have to ask a guy like how do you feel when you cross your legs how do you feel when you do the splits or something does it hurt I think it does but I don't know how so I don't know how to describe this you need to research and that's really the prime difference here the same core idea of research and knowing your perspective is a good thing but one of them disguises it as censorship to the point where it's basically telling you to not even bother researching because you shouldn't and then one of them is just telling you to research that you can explore writing and you can see which one is the good one here. You can at least see which one that I'm leaning towards in the context of what I've just said here. So really, that's it. And I'm going to be going on more about the differences between self-censoring and research now. So we've kind of gotten that out of the way. So firstly, let's talk about research. And I'm also going to be kind of touching on the idea of um, using political opinions to not take criticism. And that goes for both sides. It goes for the side that is calling everybody racist. That goes for the side that's calling everybody SJWs. Okay, so research. So if somebody is living in New York, in my story, and I am obviously not living in New York, I, d I don't know what it's like there. I would need to either go and, you know, ask some people on like forums or something, what's it like living in New York? I need to go watch some videos of like, maybe tours of New York. If I can, if I can afford it, go to New York and actually go there and like experience it. Because how, like the accuracy, the, the kind of immersion of your story, I guess, it's like, it needs to be at least starting from an accurate place. Like even if your intent is to do this weird like Alejandro Yodorowsky, like David Lynchian, what's his face over here? Mark Delewashla kind of thing where you're you're presenting something and then you're going the opposite direction with your intent to kind of kind of like confuse and just cloud the mind of the reader. You're gonna need to know where to start with as an accurate place. So for instance, if I'm trying to do some weird disorienting thing where I'm saying that it's New York, but it's like a weird parallel version of New York and it's like, it has England weather, like it's raining all the time and everything. I need to still start from an accurate place because if I know nothing about New York, I still, I, I don't know what's ordinary for New York. So let's say New York did rain all the time, then I would be saying, wow, they won't know that like, I'm creating this like confusing thing for the reader. When in reality, the reader who does know something about New York is just like, what's, what's wrong with this? I, I don't get why there's this weird like parallel thing going on when it's an accurate representation. You don't know. You don't know where to start with. So it is good to research. I mean, I'm not saying like go into every single little detail. You don't have to dump your research into your writing and go, the number of rainy days on average in this country is approximately blah blah blah. You don't need to say that, but you need to have that in your mind so that you at least know the timeline of what you're doing and how it fits in with the world so that you can create a better story and a better world that has an internal logic to it. And that's the good thing about the know your perspective sort of thing. Now, on the other hand, we have the same core idea, but twisted. So, as I've talked about before, different people would say a different gender or whatever. They do have a different experience in day-to-day -day life purely 
for being like a different shape or whatever, I guess. So it kind of gets that from that perspective, from a people perspective, instead of like a, you know, a research perspective purely on, on a general thing, it kind of concentrates on people. And then it goes in a really malicious way, I think. That's generally what I kind of think when there's censorship, because there's different types. There's where somebody is purely just like, before you say that, think about the implication or think about like what you do. I wouldn't necessarily call that censorship. You can word it in a way that is just basically somebody going, before you do that, think about this. And they're basically trying to stall you to prevent you from saying things because they want to censor you, sure. But that can also be used just to say, hang on, before you just go and assume something, research it. That, I would say, is a non-malicious sort of thing. It's just trying to tell you to be a bit more aware of yourself, I guess. But what this one does is it goes in the, the malicious way. It says, hey, you, because of your skin color, I'm gonna automatically assume what's it like in your mind and your ability to process other people. So I'm going to assume that because you're white, let's say, or because you're male, you can't process the idea of what it's like to be a female. Even if you ask a female before you write, you can't process that because you're a man and you're bad. So I'm just going to not let you talk at all. And I'm going to say that you're not allowed to do that because in my mind, everything you do is gonna be inaccurate. And obviously, and obviously with a bias like that, even if they did write something accurate, you would try to make it sound inaccurate just to discredit them when you come across with that. So it is basically telling you just don't try. That is a big problem with that lecture as a whole because not only is it being dishonest, it, it's also just restricting everyone. And as well in that same sort of writing course, they also have writers clubs that the uh, lecturers like run outside. So this is like kind of outside the course so you don't have to like even notice that they exist i'm just putting that out there to make it sound not as bad as it i'm probably making it sound but they have one from minorities and then they have one for minority women that's the right that's the writing groups they don't have a general writing group where everyone can come in they just have a s special writing groups because i'm apparently disabled for being a minority female i'm apparently disabled and I, I need the extra help and i can't just go there with like a white friend i have to i it's purely for me because of my apparent um help that i need purely for what i look like and no before you say anything i'm not going to them like even for research purposes to to make like a video on how that would be i'm just not i don't want to I don't want to get involved in that shit. I don't want to be around those people. I just, I don't care. I'm gonna be fair and I'm going to say that it can just, it can be something else like the people there. I'm not going to say that they're all like horrible people or anything. They could just be people who genuinely do need help with their writing. And I think the, the majority of them just are. I'm not gonna be mean like that, but the way that they were describing it, 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 it was in that kind of social justice way. So even if the people who run it or the people who go there aren't, the way that they were describing it does just tell me I don't want to be there. So that's really what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to judge these people purely even though I haven't been there and I haven't seen them, but I'm just trying to de describe what's wrong with the way that it's being talked about, the way that it's being advertised. I just don't like it and I don't like the social justice seeping into it. So now we're finally going to get to criticism. So when you're doing anything creative, you're always going to meet somebody who does their work and puts their heart and soul into it and then if you, if you criticize a tiny bit, they're gonna take that as the slight against humanity, the slight against them, and they're gonna hate you, and that's really not fun. But here's the thing, okay, you have to, I, I understand, believe me, I do, I'm trying to write a novel, I do understand how difficult it is, but when you pour your heart and soul into something, the intent of it is to try and make it as best as it can be, and trying to make it as, as good as it can be, so that you can be proud of it, but because, as well, it's an entertainment thing, like, other people it gives you joy to see other people entertained by this thing you've created. So, you do need to take the criticism. I don't- like, novels aren't really published on the first draft. At least, like, not unless it's an artistic thing. It's not really published on the first draft for a reason, because no matter how perfect your writing is, you're still gonna have off days, and you're gonna need to keep writing on those days, or you need to keep drawing or whatever you're doing on those days, but then you need to come back, and you need to go over it, because you can't just like leave this weird inconsistent sloppy mess of a book or whatever for people. If you're, you mean you're not proud of it, you're really not. You might get hurt by certain types of criticism and everything, but you're really not proud of it. And it kind of hurts because it feels like they are attacking you personally, but they're not. I mean, if you give it to some random person, they don't know anything about you. They're just looking at what you're giving them. So it's not a personal thing, it's just you need to kind of separate yourself from what you've written and go, I will take all this criticism. And the reason that I'm bringing this up is because there's, again, this kind of uh, criticism 
and politics mashup that I just don't like. Like, if somebody, um, there was this thing the other day that I saw on Twitter and it was like, this guy wrote as a female in this one passage and everybody was just criticizing this one passage. So that's what I'm doing. I'm taking this one passage out of context. I'm not defending or trying to insult the actual book itself because I wouldn't know, but there was this passage about this woman and if she was just having a sense of humor, she was just looking in the mirror and being like, um, she was looking like shit because she'd just been through this horrible thing so in my, her mind she was making herself feel better by standing in front of the mirror and laughing at herself in a sort of sarcastic way and going yeah don't I look attractive when she was just t terrible and it was her way of making herself feel better she was just a normal female character but for some reason people were taking that and going no this is sexist because a guy wrote this and this is somehow like overly sexual even though she was just making a joke about being attractive she, she wasn't trying to make it like i'm an object she wasn't doing anything like that obviously not but they were trying to make it out like it was and this is one side of it some people give you criticism as a way to kind of shut you down and they don't actually care about you or like what you've written or the way that you've written it they don't care about criticism but again i think it's really important to distinguish between that and actual criticism because some people can take that and go everything that people use to criticize me every single criticism is just a way to shut me down and censor me no and in the same way not every single bit of criticism that you receive could be legitimate you just have to analyze the context around it i mean i for one actually looking at the way the guy was writing it, it was okay to me and as a woman because apparently i need to approve of, of this female perspective, um, I think it was fine. I don't think there was anything wrong with it. I think the people were just looking at things to cry about as per usual. And I just, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think that's really it when you're talking about criticism. Try to kind of look at the context of the criticism. Look at what they're trying to say. Even show someone else the criticism. Like go up to someone else and say, read this and read like what I've done. Look at what I've done and then look at the criticism. Tell me what you think, like between these two things, just to see if it is level criticism or not. Because if you can't see it yourself and you're kind of questioning it, just go in and talk to someone else with a different perspective. See if it's just you trying to latch onto other forces like political things or like, you know, calling everybody a this or that and trying to brush off the criticism or it is genuine criticism. If you can't tell, be honest with yourself. Go and look at somebody else and what they're saying about these things and be honest, like truly honest with what you're doing. A lot of the time, as I said before, when you're dealing with something that's personal, or at least you perceive it as personal because you put so much work into it, you are going to kind of get that way even if you don't really notice it. You're going to kind of go, what if I say that this is a political thing and they're just giving me criticism, but no, 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 it's a political thing. So I don't have to pay attention to it. And you'll feel better about yourself, even if you don't realize you're doing it. That that's that's kind of the scary thing, because we aren't perfect. Our perspectives aren't perfect, as I said. Research, criticism, everything, and that goes both ways. So so I'm gonna summarize what I've said here, in case you need me to. Like, there's a difference between censorship and completely giving up before identity politics and genuine research. And remember the difference. In the same way, there is a difference between using politics to disguise censorship as criticism as a way to shut someone down and genuine criticism that you need to accept in order to improve and to embrace the industry that you're trying to break into as a creative person. It's, it's just one of those things and unfortunately you're gonna have to deal with a lot of bullshit. I mean looking at it now like I made a video ages ago talking about like Apu uh, from The Simpsons and Luckily, The Simpsons responded with like, it's a joke, get over it with their episode, but unfortunately now, this person who voices him is gonna, like, willing to step down, which... The person themselves, their individual choice, if they really do want to kind of step down because they're kind of sick of playing the role and they don't really want to deal with the controversy, I don't see what the big deal is, but kind of overall, like, if they're doing it because of the fact that it's offensive or whatever, and they want to be nice, they are just pandering at that point, so there's two different perspectives there. If they genuinely want to just step down and they're kind of using this as an excuse to go do something else, power to them. I mean, they're going to get somebody else to do the voice anyway. Isn't the voice of Homer Simpson, like, changed multiple times and we barely noticed? So on that hand, it's fine. On the other hand, if they're doing it from pressure, that's really bad. And again, I think that this is an example of criticism, dis like, disguised criticism, so... There is probably some genuine criticism in there, but their voices are kind of being lost by the overall thing of like, he's racist. And again, I'll probably link some videos on my, like, the videos that I kind of like about the idea of who Apu was. Like, he wasn't just this racist character, he did have genuine good character, and he was a kind of, well, everybody in there is a kind of stereotype. So, in a way, he was kind of someone with more depth than a lot of the other characters who were white and things like that. And another thing before I go, 
talking about this kind of criticism as well. Even if the criticism isn't legitimate, you still need to recognize it. I'm not saying change your work for it, but I'm saying go, this is a mindset that I have encountered in this industry that I'm in. I need to consider what happens when I encounter more of this mindset and how I will respond. That in itself is an important form of taking in criticism, even if the criticism itself is not legitimate. So really, I think that that's all I had to say about that. I actually went on for quite a long time. So now I'm gonna do some generic housekeeping and stuff like that. So if you're not interested, then thank you for watching. But other than that, so as per usual, it's gonna be very sporadic uploads. I don't know how long they're gonna be as well because I'm just trying to find stuff that I'm interested in talking about. And I think it was kind of weird because I was kind of going through that sort of burnout sort of thing where I just didn't want to talk about anything. I was just sick of everything being political so I kind of ignored all of that and I just went to watch like a bunch of gaming videos and things. I just started reading and I put off the internet and I just did all stuff like that so that is definitely tied to the lack of stuff that I've been having to say because there's only like a small amount of stuff that I can say before just like I'm just repeating myself and everybody's getting sick of it and I need to like stop. So then I just I just went on this like shoe on head binge out of nowhere and I was like hey I suddenly feel like talking about stuff now. I feel like a bit motivated. So even if the stuff that I'll be talking about is kind of generic, like more loose, like there's no script or anything, that's kind of the way it's going. I'm just trying to find a fresh way to make content so I don't look like I'm trying to force myself to, because that wouldn't be fun for anyone. And I am dealing with the burnout by like still making content, but I'm just making different types of content, which is on my other channel as well. Like I talked about the the song and i'm just doing like stupid shit over there as well so i guess if you want more content from me that's where you're gonna find it i was actually thinking i know this is kind of generic but i was even thinking like i have a bunch of notes about stuff that i haven't talked about that i didn't feel the need to i figured since i'm in this kind of conversational sort of style of video that i like that i'm feeling motivated to do i could talk about stuff like the pink tax and everything because i haven't actually said anything about it and i feel like i could just make it fun you know let me give my thoughts about this sort of thing i recently did i, I reviewed some monstrosities i mean not not top tier content not like but the memes are good 